my name is Kate and I'm an education coordinator with the Fisheries and Oceans Canada Stream to Sea program. Each year, hundreds of classes in the Pacific region care for and monitor juvenile salmon through our Salmon is in the Classroom program. Classrooms are outfitted with freshwater aquariums and are stocked with salmon eggs provided by local hatcheries. In many aquariums, we place the eggs in floating baskets so that we can see them. In nature, eggs would be covered with gravel at the bottom of the stream in a nest called a red. Over the next several months, dedicated teachers and students observe and study the salmon as they grow. When the eggs hatch, they become alevin and hide down in the rocks and gravel. In nature, this would protect them from predators that want to eat them. Can you think of any predators that would like to eat young salmon? As alevin emerge from the gravel, they begin their next stage of life as fry. When the salmon fry are ready to start swimming, they use their tails to move up to the surface and swallow a mouthful of air. The air is not for breathing, but to balance the weight of their body and allow them to float in the water. The air goes into an organ called a swim bladder. At this stage, fry develop dark colored bars on their bodies called par marks. Par marks help fry blend into the shadows and camouflage them from predators. Can you think of other animals that use camouflage to hide from predators? Once the fry are swimming, they are ready to be released into local streams. Today I'm down here in Goldstream Park to release 200 coho fry into the stream. Before releasing the fry, it's important to make sure that this is a good habitat for them. Can you think of some things that young salmon need to survive in the stream? So what does a young salmon fry need to survive? First of all, water. Salmon prefer cool, clean water. Young salmon are very sensitive to pollutants like household chemicals and runoff from roads. They'll do the best in clean, clear streams like this. Next is oxygen for the salmon fry to breathe. In classroom aquariums, a pump puts oxygen in the water. In the stream, riffles like these ones move and oxygenate the water. In classroom aquariums, the salmon were protected from extreme temperatures because we controlled the temperature of the water. But in the stream, they need shade to protect them from the sun. Trees and other vegetation like this help keep the stream cool and give the salmon places to hide from predators. Trees also provide homes for insects that salmon like to eat. Salmon fry catch tiny insects that float past them. As they grow, the fry can also catch larger insects like mayflies and stoneflies that land on the water to lay their eggs. I found lots of salmon food in this area, including caddisfly larvae like this one. This spot provides the salmon fry with cool, clean, oxygenated water. It also has lots of trees and plants to provide shelter and many bugs for the salmon to eat. So I think this is a great place to release our salmon fry. salmon, so they will spend one to two years in this stream before migrating to the ocean. Many classroom aquariums raise chum salmon, 
and Chum Fry swim out to sea right away. At this stage, Fry begin imprinting. Sam and Fry memorize the scent of their home stream so they can find their way back to it as spawning adults. Salmon have such a good sense of smell that they can identify their home stream all the way from the ocean. Salmon fry face many threats, including gravel movement, big changes in water temperature or level, sedimentation, pollution, and blocks to their migration routes out to sea. We can help salmon by keeping our local streams clean, conserving water, avoiding washing pollutants down storm drains, and by taking part in programs like this one to learn more about salmon. Thank you to all of the teachers, students, and staff who helped raise salmon in schools this year. And thank you also to the hatcheries that provided eggs for the program. For more information about Salmon and the Stream to Sea program, you can go to streamtosea.ca and get in touch with your local education coordinator.